Um, Gigari has a population of 190 people. When I came to Gigari 54 years ago, it had 190 children in its school. So to say that Gigari has been on a roller coaster ride, I'm not kidding, it has been. Um, it's a, where does the story start? I guess it started with a vibrant community that had a wonderful cheese factory, and it was about cows. When the cheese factory would connect at the end of the 90s, kids really hit us. Our school started to slowly lose children. It was the start of the decimation of our little town centre that had all the services, the butcher, the didn't have to buy them down here, the supermarket, the hairdresser, the news agents, all the services that you need to live an independent life in. And I guess the scariest part about that slide down was that none of us noticed it. Change is insidious in small towns. Heinz came to Gagari in the 90s. They told us they'd be there for 15 years and they stayed for 17. It was before Heinz declared that they were leaving that we decided as a community we needed to do something about our town or we would just become another statistic. We started a little group that someone called the Gary Development Group and I don't know why I got that name, no, but anyway, today it seems to fit. There was eight on that little committee and we were determined to change life in Gagari. When I came as a young school teacher, it was a bustling community where there was huge community engagement, where people knew everybody. By the late 90s, nobody knew who their neighbours were, we're all too busy. Um, and then when the millennium drought hit, we got together to think, how do we re-engage our community? It was when we were knocking on a few doors to see who wanted to come and join us. But I found my next door neighbour had been there for seven years, and I didn't have a clue who she was or what she looked like. Shame on me, but shame on our community for allowing such a thing to happen. So diligently, we sought for ideas. And a fellow from the next town said, why don't you have a farmer's done? Yeah, right. Fantastic idea, in the Gary, I don't think so. But our community has a will. When he came and spoke to this little group of people, he said, we can do it. And we thought, I don't know, but what did we have to lose? And so we started the farmers market, and from little things, big things, things grew. It became the powerhouse of our economy. At the same time, the cows, as the cows started to fade, at that first market, we looked for the, everything that was cheap, because we had no money. And the people sat on bales of hay, and I conned the old kinder photographer who lived in Melbourne to find me some cheap music, which meant they'd come and play for nothing, of which they did. And as the market prospered, and the town started to prosper, we asked those people back 12 months later and said to them, come and see what you helped to create. Uh, they were amazed and they had a great weekend. They brought a few mates with them those two. And a dozen of them that weekend decided that Gagari should run a music festival. Well, if you thought of a farmer's market was hard to sell to a group of cockies, I can tell you a music concert was a whole lot harder. And so we said, oh, well, what have we got to lose? Give it a go. And that was the start of the Gagari Music Muster. Uh, last year, on the Saturday of that muster, there were 1,600 people attended workshops in learning how to play an instrument. It's about newcomers to music festival, and it has grown and blossomed. It's also become a powerhouse of finance for our community as well. Um, when we started the, the market, there wasn't enough of us to be able to run everything. So we invited community members, we invited the CFA to run the barbecue. We invited the community cottage to run 
the craft market section of it so that it could re finance the replacement of our community car. A community car on, the, on me has owned two other privately owned, it is one of two privately owned community cars in Victoria. And one of them coming from a town of 109 people, not bad. Um, the school come and they can make money. Uh, the rec reserve run a chook auction, which uh, finances all their rec um, maintenance needs for the year. So the market became a democracy and that's what runs well. As the development group has grown, it now represents every group within Gagarin. It's a time to share ideas and to rejoice in our celebrations as often in small towns we don't remember to do. Um, where did that leave us when Heinz decided they were going to leave? Um, had it happened five years earlier, the town would be devastated. But because we were on a roll and because people were so confident that they could change things, for instance, when the Shire announced that they were shutting the kinder, we said, thank you, get out of town, we'll do it ourselves. Which we had the money to finance until we found another provider. The tennis club had shut down. Well, we scratched around and found an old life member. There's six tennis teams in Gagari now. And with that positivity, when Hines shut down, everybody outside of Gagari was telling us how terrible it was. We were saying it is bad for people who are poor, but fortunately the people at Hines, there was only 10 out of the Gary and they all were facing retirement. So they had a beautiful package. Um, what those, that those preparation years had taught us, don't turn a, a sad face. Look at what can come out of things. Look at the advantages that you've got to offer the next bloke that's going to come to Gagari. So Heinz came to us and they said, we'll give you 50,000, that'll help the market and the master. Um, I met with the Ryan's Trust and said, we can do better than this, can't we? And we put to them our dream of creating Botanical Garden. And how it, going to, it was, would be Gagari's future. Um, Heinz came back to us and said, that's a fabulous idea, of course you can have the land. By the way, where is it? We can't find it. They didn't have a clue what they owned in Gagari, so we quickly took them and showed them. They came to Gagari to hand the land back and they handed with it 70 megalitres of water and three house blocks. They actually turned 50 grand into $250,000. And that's why being positive about the outcomes. Um, we had a penny old treasurer who said to us in the early days, we need to make a decision. We either stack up our cash and develop a war chest, or we spend it th through the community now. Well, it was overwhelming. We needed a war chest for opportunity. The first war chest, of course, was when our kinder shut. And we said, thank you for the show. You've been here, now you've done the dip, now go. Um, I guess the next time our war chest came into play was when Regional Arts Victoria, um, uh, the Small Towns Transformational Grant came out. And we decided on the first part of this botanic gardens we wanted a sound show performance space. Because in, these, in the years that have gone, the Gary has become a place where music is commonplace a place where gathering around food is commonplace. In fact, I reckon I paid 10,000 spawns. And people say to me, how do you get people together? Because there's nobody in our community that at one stage or another doesn't volunteer to do something. Um, give people a scone and, and welcome them to the table and they'll do anything for you. And like, it's just, I've got an amazing bunch of people around me and it, they've been able to drive us forward. Uh, going back to the botanical gardens, if we were going to succeed in putting the botanical gardens in Gigari, 
we had to have something that was different. So we went to TCL who designed the Australian Gardens and who are world, 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 world winners of awards all over and said to them, hey, we've got no money, but we've got no idea. They said, I'll come up and have a look at you. And they came up and over a lovely lunch, they decided they wanted to work with us because they said, we've never worked with a community before. At this stage of the game, uh, our community and the grants we've got have put a, a million dollars into that, the start of that garden. And part of that is this beautiful performance space of Regional Arts Victoria um, funded for us. Uh, when we got that grant, we were pretty decided. All we wanted was that sound show. They said, no, it doesn't work like that. You've got to have an arts project. And this is why I say to people, you need to learn to ask. Because when we start thinking about who these three people were going to be, and I'd been to Lincoln, I saw the music things, and I said, oh, that, that bloke was pretty interesting. I loved the music things. And someone had been somewhere else, or my daughter had seen a theremin in Melbourne, and that was pretty interesting. And we just asked these people, and they asked them if they'd like to come to Big Area Meters. Well, Graham Leake said, well, I'll have to get a ticket to fly out from England, but I'm interested. So, Robin Fox, when we ran him, he was in Vancouver. Oh, well, I'll be home in three weeks. Yeah, I'd love to come. And Gloria Longman, who did this magnificent quilt, giant quilt that now is our backdrop in our hall, she was overseas as well. For some unknown reason, three famous people, performers, from around the world ended in Gagari on one day. Not because we were special, but because we asked. Um, it's been a surreal two years in Gagari with the arts program. It's brought um, different elements to it. So I, I just keep saying, say to people, build your pennies up and start watches because it's delivered to Gagari something special. Because Gagari's got 192 people, there's not, we needed to look elsewhere for people to help us. The Music Festival Committee, I'm the only one from Gagari on it. The rest of the committees from across Northern Victoria, in fact, one of them's from Gumba, and they all come to Gagari to celebrate the making of music in a different way. From the music muster, Kanjibri Jam. Once again, I'm the only one on that committee. The rest come from Northern Victoria and are really happy to be involved. And as everything we've created happens, our Gagari family has grown and grown. Um, the volunteer hours of Gagari is amazing. You ask people to do things, and because we've got a bit cocky and a bit confident, Nobody ever says why, they say what, how can we? It, it's one of those things where we build trust with success. Um, we've always thought that somewhere along the line we're going to skin our nerves, something's not going to work. So far, touch wood, that hasn't happened. Um, by giving a voice to our community, and I mean giving a voice, has meant that sometimes I'm involved in things I'm not really interested in. But they'll do anything for us, so we need to pay back at times so they will assist. Uh, we assist them so they can keep assisting us. Like our, we've got a little community newsletter. Our editors don't live in Gigo. We don't have people with that particular talents. And our two editors live you know, 20 minutes drive away. But they come into the area to produce a, this beautiful newsletter or newspaper or whatever you want to call it, it's 28 pages or something. But it's wonderful because once again it's a celebration of our community. Um, where to from now? Because of our open door approach, there's a, Gagari's future is very, very fixed. In the next two years, a quarter of a billion dollars investment is going to be put into Gagari. $160 million solar farm, two miles from me. 
How many objections? None. A $60 million milk factory, can you not believe, that will make milk and cheese, um, is crawling out of the ground now at a rate of knots. And into the old Heinz factory is a biodigester about going through all the planning it can pass me shy. If someone had told us five years ago that people would be coming to our town to invest, we'd have said no way. But here we are at this point in time with a quarter of a billion dollars to be invested. What do I take from that? Open the door and welcome people in. Don't try to, don't try to control them. Welcome them in, listen to them, and we've listened to many stories along the way, and they've become part of our history. Um, what's the best thing that I've done in 15 years? It's to be part of a community that talks to each other, respects each other, and works for each other. Um, nothing's impossible. The 190 people will certainly start changing. A school won't be under threat, our kinder won't be under threat, and we'll have a future. Thank you.